whispered to me a story last fall about Mr. Albert Frederick. I used to drive him around a lot in winter. He was a lawyer, that man. A group Burnett. I don't like him very much. Just the same, he had lots of money. And he likes music. He discovered a young musician by the name of Michel Lacoste. Ah, poor Michel. He don't have much money, and he has a hard time living with the crazy wife and trying to make music. And there was a girl, uh, Miss Roberts, an American. She was a writer, too. Yes, she was a nice girl. Oh, she, she was as pretty as my granddaughter, Mary Therese. Love for Marcy Long, city desk. Yes? Yes, go ahead. Accident, 5.20 p.m. Hotel Dier Hospital. Renee Bronco. Where? What age? Get by truck? Is it critical? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, that's right. Uh huh, I have it. Thank you. phoned in from the Hotel Dier Hospital. Is it worth anything? Granny Brancourt. Yes, there may be a story there. She was a very famous actress who left the stage years ago when her fiancé, Robert Marshaw, died in an accident at Montmorency Falls. All right. Shall I see her? Yes, and look up Albert Frederick. The lawyer? That's right. He was a friend of theirs. I'd like you to do a feature on her career, and he can help you. And this will introduce you to him. Okay, boss. Hotel dear, it is. Who oh, is it? It's a young lady from a newspaper. Do you wish to speak with her? Oh. I'm glad. The newspapers. Haven't forgotten me entirely. How could they forget anyone as famous as you? Five minutes only, please. Miss Broncourt, I have a picture here from our files. Do you remember it? Oh, yes. Yes. It was taken the week before Robert was killed. Robert Marchand. Your fiance, I know. The accident at Montmorency Falls. Oh, it was no accident. He was killed. Oh, please, please, lie back, lie back. It wasn't an accident. But there was an inquiry. He was murdered. They said I was insane. They put me away. Miss Branco, who? Who did this to you? Who claimed you were insane? Years later, they let me out. They said I was harmless then. I've lived in fear. Dreadful fear, day and night. Day and night. Day and night. You must rest. You mustn't excite yourself. Day and night. You'll have to leave now. Oh, but this is important. Just another minute, please. I'm sorry. <sighs> May I come back tomorrow? Maybe. Mr. Albert Frederick, please. Mr. Durand of La Formation sent me. Will you come in? Please? Thank you.
This way, please. If you'll wait in here. motive. I wish you'd finish. Please don't be polite to me. Oh, your artists are never satisfied with yourself. Now, Michel, you really should be on top of the world. Finally, your concerto will be performed and it is a great piece of music. It could be. Now, let's drink to your success. My success. Is it as bad as all that? Why don't you confide in me? You are all upset. You want to keep it within your four walls? But sometimes the walls are much thinner than one thinks. What's the matter with Blanche? We just can't get along, that's all. Another man? No, there's no other man, no other woman. It's just between her and me. Well, what is between her and you? I don't know where to begin and where to end. Hysteria? I'm an old lawyer. I've looked into many unhappy marriages. There are only a few basic causes. No, it isn't Blanche's fault. You see, it all started when she realized that her voice wasn't good enough for a career. That's unfortunate, but doesn't she realize that she's the wife of a man with a great talent, a great future? She hates my music. Well, she envies you. You have something and, and her life is empty. She hates me, and that makes her think that I hate her. Do you want to listen to another record? It's not exactly music. What is it? Wait. This is what I heard this morning. To whom it may concern, I, Blanche Lacoste, living in constant fear of death with which my husband threatens me, want it known that should I be found dead, it was his doing, Blanche Lacoste. I wouldn't take this too seriously. Maybe she found this device in a mystery book. smoke too much. You worry too much. Try to muddle along until after the concert and then we'll attack your marital problem. On the strength of this, we should be able to force a separation. It's hopeless. Michel, you can't go on like this. I know, I can foretell. Today you are sorry for her. You made a mistake and you want to carry the responsibilities. But one day it'll be too much. One day you will hate her. She's driving you to a crisis. Oh, you must excuse me for a few minutes. Somebody's waiting for me. Why don't you help yourself to another drink? No, thank you. It, I must go now. I don't want her to be alone too long. If you cannot find peace at your home, I can always put you up. Thanks, Albert. You're very generous to me, as always. You know why? Because I believe that someday you'll be a very famous man, and I want to be mentioned in your biography. Very vain, Michel. Good night. Good night. Miss Roberts? Mr. Frederick? How do you do? Good evening. Uh, won't you come into the library? I confess to a prejudice for open fires on a night like this. So you are working for my old friend, you know? Yes. He seems awfully nice. Very charming. I've known him for more years than I can to remember. Oh, surely you're a good deal younger than Mr. Durant. Well, in spirit at least. May I offer you a brandy? Oh, I'm afraid I haven't time, Mr. Frederick. You see, we go to press at midnight. My dear Miss Roberts, it has taken this brandy 68 years to reach its full flavor. I am sure you can spare it five minutes. Well, if you insist. but. I'm very anxious to get all the information I can on Renee Brancourt. And since you knew her and Robert Marchand so well, I thought... Renee Brancourt? The actress. She was taken to the Hotel Dieu this evening. To a hospital? Yes. She was hit by a car. 
I don't think they expect her to live. Poor Renee. Tragic end to a tragic career. You bring back sad memories. She was to have married my dearest friend, and then he died in an accident. Yes, I know. She told me. She told you? You talked with her? Yes. Just for a few minutes, though. I'm going to see her again tomorrow. She... She evidently doesn't believe that Marchand's death was an accident. In fact, she seems to be convinced. Yes. Yes, I know poor Renee's fixation. But naturally, there was a very complete investigation at the time of the inquest, so... Evidently, you agree, Mr. Frederick, that the shock unbalanced her mind? My dear Miss Roberts, I'm not an expert. But two of our leading doctors agreed that it had. So there was nothing else to do but accept their opinions. I suppose you're right, but... There was something about the way she talked. And I think she knows the end isn't far away. Doctors are no doctors. It, it's hard to believe. It is hard. And it's heartbreaking. I must telephone the hospital and see if there's anything I can do for her. Oh, I've upset you. I'm sorry. Mr. Durand thought, well, maybe you'd be able to give me some personal details. I am upset. But this comes as rather a severe shock. I'm afraid there is... There isn't really anything I could do for you right now. But supposing I called you on in a couple of days and then, if you don't mind coming back. No, no, I'd be glad to. Thanks for all your kindness to me. Oh, I assure you it was nothing. At least I've had the good fortune of making your acquaintance. Thanks again. Good night. Good night, Miss Roberts, but not goodbye, I trust. <laughs> Dear? Yes. Yes? Oh, are you a relative? I see. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that Miss Brockor died half an hour ago. Oh. Thank you. please. Hello. Hello, Edward. This is Albert. Albert Frederick. I want to congratulate you on your taste in reporters. As you get older, it's improving. Maybe you're just getting more appreciative the older you get. Charming, obviously. Also a good reporter, which is something else again. No doubt. But seriously, my friend, why assign a reporter to reopen old wounds? Poor Robert is dead for 20 years, and I just heard that a half an hour ago, René Brancourt passed away. Why not let them rest in peace? Yes, I think you're right, Albert. Maybe just a brief obituary might be best. That's right. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Albert. Mr. Frederick was most charming. I was just speaking to him. He told me René Brancourt just died. Oh, no. Poor thing. Mr. Frederick must have phoned the hospital right after I left. He's a very interesting man, your friend. Yes, he's a connoisseur. He's a great believer in beauty. Nobody in the city does more for the arts. Incidentally, I don't think we'll be running that story on René Broncourt. Oh, now, wait. That's front page news in this René Broncourt story. Read that. No, we're just printing an obituary. All right. That's what Mr. Frederick wants. That's what I want. Okay, boss. You're the editor. On your forehead, Mr. Durand. Huh? Oh, how did you know? Maybe I'm psychic. Mm -hmm. 
Roberts, somebody wants to see you. Who, me? Yes. Good evening. You wanted to see me? Yes. I'm sorry to tell you that Miss Brancourt... Yes. Yes, I know. Well, she made me promise to bring you these. And she said not to give them to anyone but you. Keys? Yes. To her room, 117 Sula Cap. 117 Sula Cap. Renee Broncourt's room. She's not home. I know. I have to get some things from her room. Upstairs, number seven. Thank you. One of your nine lives. You just frightened me out of one of mine. I bet you're hungry. I'll let you out when I leave. I, 
I was just leaving. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, that there's a little kitten in there. I don't think she's been fed today. Oh, don't worry about her. This face is full of mice. Excuse me, Jean. Could we have a little more expression from the strings? Certainly, Monsieur. Thank you. Gentlemen, the last six bars, please. Mr. Lacoste, your wife's on the phone. Again? I'm sorry. We'll wait for Monsieur Lacoste. Hello? Yes. But you just told me. Listen, Blanche, will you please stop calling me? No, I'm not absent-minded, and you don't have to remind me three times when you want to have something done. Listen, if you just leave me alone for five minutes, we will be able to finish the run-through. Yes, yes, I will stop at the drugstore and pick up your prescription on my way home. All right, good night. <laughs> The other Bradford case came up this morning. Yes, as a matter of fact, we just adjourned for lunch. Will you excuse me? Surely. Just let me know how it turns out. I'll call you. Right. Goodbye. Good morning, Miss Lovett. Oh, Mr. Frederick, I, I was just thinking of you. And I was just thinking of having lunch at the Chateau Fontenay. May I have the pleasure of your company? All right. But, but just give me a few minutes to make myself presentable. Suppose we meet on the terrace in 15 minutes. Perfect. find you eating. But, Mr. Frederick, a man must live. But why? Why must a man live? With me, it's become a habit. Gingerbread. No wonder you fires have that aroma. Uh, something I can get for you, Mr. Frederick? Uh, no, thank you. Don't disturb yourself, my friend. The young lady who was here just now, a friend of mine, left her lipstick. I said I'd look for it. Oh, she was over there. Second, I'll call. She certainly managed to get herself dusted. <laughs> no wonder. Nobody is dug in those marchand files for years. the devil would a woman leave her lipstick. I don't know why, but they are always losing something. enjoyed most, the lunch or the view. I'm sorry, I can take credit only for the former. But you should see it in the winter. That's when it is really beautiful. Yes, I'm looking forward to the snow. You ski? Yes, do you? No, I prefer the more sedate pleasures of life. <laughs> Cigarette? Thank you. Oh, so matches are your favorite doodle, huh? Yes, my worst vice.
But you have many virtues. Music, art. I know a lot about you. You do? Well, it's part of my job to know about all the prominent people in town, isn't it? Of course it is. I only hope you are as well informed when you follow your sporting instincts. Our mountain trails are rather dangerous. Yes, so I understand. It doesn't frighten you? One can't very well be a sportsman and a coward at the same time. No, but a real good sportsman knows his own limitations and never takes unnecessary chances, no matter how thrilling the challenge. It's sweet of you to worry about me. I'll be careful. Good evening. I've been alone all day with this cold, and now my head's beginning to bother me again. I'm sorry. Maybe you should have gone out. Where, for instance? Out in the sun, you need it. <laughs> that ought to be fun. Who am I supposed to talk to? The lamppost? Why don't you make some friends? Oh, I can't be bothered. Never met so many stupid people. I've got to work tonight, and I'm very tired. Oh, you are very tired. Well, I'm sick. I know you are sick. I wish I could do something for you. The doctor told me I had to have a complete rest. He said anything might happen unless I had a complete rest. I know. I've tried to send you away. You'd love that, wouldn't you? Ron, please stop jumping at everything I say. You want to get rid of me? I want you to go away for a rest, that's all. Oh, you'd do anything to get me out of the way. I only want you to get well, and you know that. Now, please let me work. Oh, sure, sure. You have to work. It doesn't matter that I'm dying. You have to finish your concerto. And for what? Another three hundred dollars? Like your last symphony? I know it won't make any money, but it's worth doing. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Why don't you get wise to yourself? You're just wasting your time. Why can't you write popular songs? You used to when you were in college. Do you suppose if I'd known I was going to starve and spend the rest of my life living like this, I'd ever have married you? Well, why don't you answer? There isn't any answer to that, Blanche. Naturally, you forgot my sleeping medicine. Forgot your... Oh, yes. It's in my briefcase. Dinner. Well, why don't you? Well, you don't expect me to go by myself, do you? Oh, I can't stand another minute in this pigsty. All right, then clean it up. Here I am, so sick I can hardly see, and you expect me to get out of my hands and knees and scrub floors for you. Don't let's have another scene, Blanche. Someday I oh, won't be able to take... I
It's Michelle. Michelle. Michelle, how on earth did you come in? Elsa, listen. Did you mean it when you said you could put me up? Well, of course. Come in. I expected you. Not exactly tonight, but soon. Listen, Albert. I can't go home. All right. I, I can't go home. All right, I know. I know. Come. May I have another drink? No. You had too many. What you need is a good night's rest and a clear head. <laughs> clear head. Albert. Albert, you were so right. Everything you said. I knew you'd come to take her. I start action as soon as possible. This afternoon, I couldn't stop her. I, I felt something. Hatred? I was afraid. Afraid of yourself? Maybe you'd better have another drink. Here. You were afraid that you might kill her? No. She killed something in me. What? My pity. I don't feel sorry for her anymore. But you were afraid that you might kill her. Kill her? No. But it crossed your mind, didn't it? No. For a second you thought it would be for the best. What? To eliminate her. Oh, eliminate. Eliminate.
Yes. Long stacos. That's right. Cause of death, probably an overdose of sleeping medicine. When can we get the chemical analysis? Right. Let me know as soon as you can. What time did she die, Inspector? Approximately midnight. And uh, what kind of drug did she use? The analysis is being made now. Should know this afternoon. And the husband? Was last seen when? Leaving this building about 5 o'clock yesterday. I found this box. St. Louis Pharmacy. Let me have that. Is that box hidden? No, the drawer was full of them. Oh, messy place, huh? Hello. St. Louis Pharmacy? This is Inspector Renault. I want to check on one of your prescriptions. The number is... 837729. No, 29. That's it. Who was it issued to? How was it delivered? And when? No, I'll wait. What are the pics? Two of the women, one of some sailors. Is that the woman they just took out of here? The same. You mind if I look at the pictures? But which one of those beavers is the husband of the murdered woman? Oh, yes. Made out to Mrs. Lacoste. Yes. And the refill? Picked up by Mr. Lacoste yesterday. Thank you. Yes, I have the doctor's name. We're checking with him. Yes, thank you. That's all. What's your opinion, Inspector? I haven't a definite opinion yet. The neighbors say she was a little, uh... Why doesn't the husband show up? There could be many reasons. We'll find Mr. Lacoste, of course. There's nothing here to convict him. But I'd like to ask him a few questions. For me, it was murder. And may I ask why are you so positive? From what I've seen of our housekeeping and clothes, the sloppy old amount of trash she ran, she was an exhibitionist and a depressant. The kind of a woman who's always sorry for herself. And if that kind of woman commits suicide, I lay you ten to one, Inspector. She'll leave a note. No. It wasn't suicide. Genius. Sheer genius. Mind if I use a phone? Sure, it's on the house. Hello, Limpo Marcio? Give me the city desk, please. Uh -huh. Michel, wake up, Michel. How did I get here? Highly intoxicated. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. That's your least worry now. Have a coffee. You'll need it. Thank you. My least worry? What do you mean? You really don't remember what you told me last night? Last night? What did I tell you last night? About my quarrel with Blanche? Quarrel? You said you killed her. <laughs> I couldn't have been that drunk. It was all my fault. Where are you going? Home, to her. You can't help her now. You don't think that I did it. What else can I think? What else can anybody think? Last night when you told me, I didn't believe it. But I must confess, I never before misjudged a person so completely. But she was all right when I left her. My butler doesn't have to know that you are here. I don't care what anybody knows. I know I didn't do it. You know what you did do last night? When did you leave Blanche? About five o'clock. Where did you go? To a bar. Which bar? I don't know. Different ones. I... What is this? A cross-examination? No. Just a rehearsal. You haven't read the complete story. The police are looking for you. That's all right. I'm going to them myself. I... They are wet. 
it wasn't raining when I came. I'm sorry, but I'll have to testify against the statement. It was pouring when I let you in. When was that? At exactly 1.35. Couldn't have been that late. Last time I looked at my watch, it was about 11. What did I do between 11 and 1.30? No, I couldn't. I couldn't. You'll have to make a decision. Do you want to hang or are you going to fight? If I did it, I don't want to live. All right. Go to the police and tell them you don't remember what you did last night. Together with the gossip about your frequent quarrels with your wife, and the fact that you were at the pharmacy yesterday and bought a powerful drug, there is enough circumstantial evidence to hang you, even without my testimony as to your own confession. Do you know the sentence? I do. You shall be hanged by the neck until you be dead. But I didn't do it. Have you ever seen a man hanged? I have. It is usually done early in the morning by the dim light of dawn. It is cold and you shiver. And you know that you'll never again see the sunrise. Never again walk in the streets. Never again smell the air of spring. And never again hear the sound of music. But, but you are a great lawyer. You're my friend. Can't you help me? You don't really believe that I did it. I can help you. No matter what I believe. But I must warn you. My fee is high, very high. But you know that I'm poor. Oh, I don't want any money. I have all the money I want. I can even afford the luxury of helping a struggling young artist to the fame I think he deserves. I have the position I want, a position which makes it possible for me to snatch an alleged murderer from a gallop. But unfortunately, all this is threatened by a certain person. A woman. A woman? Is she threatening your life? Indirectly. I want her eliminated. Eliminated? What do you mean? I'm using your own word. Don't you remember? Last night when you told me you stumbled over it. Eliminated? Yes, it sounds... Familiar? Anyway, you know now what I mean. You want me to... I told you my fee was high. Albert, this is a poor time for jokes. Now look, Michel, we've always been friends. We are both in a bad spot and we can help each other. I know I can get you out of your predicament. Now this other woman, you don't even know her. Nobody would suspect you because you have no motive. I'll give you all the directions, you won't be caught. But she's a human being. It is either she or I. She or you. Where are you going? To the police, to tell everything, including your proposition. It's a likely story coming from you. There is no record of our conversation. But there is a record, don't forget. I keep it in a safe place. It will make such an unusual effect in court to hear the dead woman accuse her husband. To whom it may concern. I, Blanche Lacoste. But you can't use this against me. I brought it to you myself because you trusted me and I trusted you then. But now we know each other a lot better. Yes, a lot better. I've always liked you, Michel. I still do. But if you don't help me, you'll hang me. If you don't rid me of her, I'll find some other way. But you will not live to see it. Think it over. Now, don't let the police catch you. Stay away from your apartment. Move into a small hotel. Get in touch with me under the name of Paul Duval. Need any money? No. Where did you go? Which bar? You want to get rid of me. You said you killed her. 
do anything to get me out of the way. I couldn't. I I couldn't. Doesn't matter if I'm dying. You've got to finish your concerto. I couldn't have been that drunk. You want to get rid of me. What did I do between 11 and 1.30? You'd do anything to get me out of the way. But she was all right when I left her. You want to get rid of me. It couldn't have been that late. But there is a record. It will make such an unusual effect in court to hear the dead woman accuse her husband. To whom it may concern. I, Blanche Lacoste, wanted to know that should I be found dead, it was his doing. No. No. I couldn't have. I couldn't. The police are looking for you. That's all right. I will go to them myself. Taxi! like a room. 75 cents a day. Any baggage? No. Well, you'll have to pay in advance. Name? Duval. Paul Duval. Address? Montreal. May I use your telephone? Two, two, one, nine, six. Albert? This is Duval, Paul Duval. What's her name and address? I got a package for Miss Roberts. I'm Miss Roberts. Are you sure you're Miss Roberts? What do you want to do? See my birth certificate? Well, he didn't say nothing about that. He just said, make sure you give it to Miss Roberts. Who said? Oh, some guy. Well, some guy. I can't imagine who that is. Well, why don't you open it and find out? You know, I thought of that. Sonny, <laughs> wait a minute. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> That does it. Hey, goes a beautiful ring. Uh, Mr. Duval, please. Paul Duval. Just a minute. That's the call you've been waiting for. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Duval. Hello, Mr. Duval. This is Miss Roberts speaking. I've just received some lovely roses with your note. I, uh, <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but you've reached the wrong Miss Roberts. See, my name's Mary, not Edith. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure of the address, and I asked the florist to check it. He must have made a mistake. Oh, uh, I thought you might like to pick them up. All right. Where do you live? I'm at the Chateau Apartments on Grand Allee. 
Oh, that's not very far from here. If I may, I will pick them up myself. All right. Uh, I'll be in all afternoon. I'm terribly sorry to have troubled you. I'll be up later. Goodbye. Roberts? Yes? I am Paul Duval. I just talked to you in the telephone. Oh, yes, of course. The flowers. Come in, won't you? Thank you. I'm afraid I haven't wrapped your roses yet. Can only take a moment. The flowers are so beautiful that I almost wish my name were Edith. I'm sorry to put you to this trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. I just put them in water to keep them fresh. Miss Roberts, I'm afraid my mind was somewhere else when you telephoned. Otherwise, I would have never suggested to... Oh, please, I understand. Why don't you just leave them where they are? Well, if you like, thank you. But uh, how about the other Miss Roberts? Oh, I haven't been able to find out where she's staying. Oh, well, it's too bad. But uh, not surprising. You see, I have been away for five years, and these roses were meant to be an announcement of my return. Well, it's a shame you had to be disappointed, but after all, five years is a long time. Yes, I'm beginning to discover that. I almost feel like a stranger in my own city. Oh, you were born here? You come from Quebec? Mr. Duval, is something wrong? May I have a glass of water? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, maybe you'd like something stronger. I have some scotch. You're very kind. Please don't worry. I, I'm just a little overtired. Well, why don't you take off your coat and make yourself comfortable? I won't be a minute. Thank you. I'm always drawn to a piano. Don't, don't get up. Here you are. Thank you. Now tell me, is there anything else I could do? No, thank you. I'm quite all right now. Well, please, don't stop playing then. That is, if you feel like it. Well, uh, what would you like me to play? Your choice. All right.
know it? No, but I'm sure I should. Do you like it? Very much. What is it? Oh, it's quite unknown so far. But I'm glad you like it. Oh, it is warm in here. I didn't realize. The afternoon sun just pours in. It always sticks. Please let me help you. You live rather high up here, don't you? That's why I chose this apartment, for the view. I can see the whole city. Every morning when I open this window, I'm surprised all over again to see how beautiful it is. I love Quebec. Don't you? Very much. Only mine is a different kind of love. Of course. Must be mixed with personal memories for you. Yes. Right over there, from a ferry boat, we used to look at the ocean liners when we were children. It was our Sunday treat. Mm -hmm. And over there, to the right, that old white house, it used to be my father's home. Mm -hmm. Mr. Duval! Heights make me nervous. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Uh, I must go now. Willie, do you have to? Yes, I... I must go. You're a strange man. I thought you were going to you play some music. what? Well, frankly, I was enjoying this. I thought you were too. You did? Don't be so nice to me. I'm the only person who might look for you in this place? I know, but I just had to. No one saw me come in. Listen. Beautiful. How oh, beautiful. By far the best thing you've ever done. What a pity if it were your last. Did you meet her? Yes, I did. When are you going to see her again? I don't know. Well, I'd suggest soon, not in town. The young lady is a stranger in Quebec. I'm sure she's never visited Montmorency Falls. What do you mean? A magnificent waterfall. At times very lonely and deserted. Ask her to come here? No, why? Look. What is she doing here? I wonder. She's a very inquisitive young lady. Look, I know Mr. Delorier is busy, but we're doing a story on the Lacoste case tonight. I've got to see him. Well, miss, you'll have to wait. They'll be through in a few minutes. Sit down.
Shall I call this concerto? Yes, please. I'll get Mr. Delorgi now. Incredible. Michel Lacoste in your apartment. What was he doing there? Oh, we just had a couple of drinks. He played me some of his music. Music while Rome burns. Don't you realize the police are looking for this man? We'd better report this. Oh, now wait. Can't you see the headlines? No headline is worth that risk. Oh, I don't think there's much of a risk. Besides, the headlines might read quite differently. This man's not a murderer. What makes you think so? Mm, lots of things. Besides, I, I feel it. You feel it. You women are always matching your feelings against logic and fact. That's a fraud. No. Well, no, that's a shortcut. Listen, you wouldn't let me solve the more shown mystery. Give me a chance. Let me prove the innocence of Michel Lacoste. I'm going to try it anyway. You can only make it tougher for me. Well, if you must. But I think you'd better take this. Do you know how to use it? Yes. Yes, I do. But I'm sure I won't need it. Is Mr. Duval in? Number 11 upstairs. Well, couldn't you... Couldn't you just tell him I'm here? Number 11, there's a lady down here to see you. No, it's not the Ritz. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, you're not. As you can see by the splendor of this place, I'm not working. Why did you come here? Oh, I was just passing by, and it's such a lovely day outside, and I was strolling, and I... No. No, that's not true. I left the apartment with the intention of seeing you. About what? About yourself. Last time when you left so abruptly... I guess I... I do owe you an explanation for that. No, you don't. Even before you left, I, I realized that you're lonely, you're very upset. It's a bad combination. So you came to offer me your friendship? Mm, only my company, in case you needed somebody to talk to. I'm a good listener. I noticed that. <laughs> but not only for music. Look, I, uh... I'm not as inexperienced as I look. I'm a newspaper woman. You think I might be good for a human interest story? Maybe you're right. It might be a relief to talk to you. You know what? We'll take my car and go for a drive in the country. Why drive in the country? <laughs> Why not? You afraid of my driving? All right, you drive yourself. Show me what you think are all the most beautiful spots. Sounds very tempting. Well, then let's go. Now, huh? All right. Will you excuse me for one second? I, I have to make a telephone call first. Oh. About a job, maybe? Yes. It's about a job. Three, two, nine, one, six. Albert, we're leaving for Montmorency Falls. How do you expect me to feel? Cold? No. Wonderful. There's nothing like loafing on a weekday. I feel like a schoolgirl playing hooky. You look like one. <laughs> What's that about that? Oh, nothing. Maybe just the thought that you have to work for a living. But I love it. I really do. Can't be a good report unless you love it. Tell me, what is your special line? Do you write for a woman's page or a society column? Crime. Where are we going? Montmorency Falls. Montmorency Falls? Yes. Why are you surprised? Because, uh, Because I wanted to go there myself. Professionally. 
Oh, and a new crime story? No. A very old one. Well, shall we try it or are you tired? No, I love to walk. All right. Oh, there go my nylons. I'll have to fix my garden. Well, uh, never mind me. I'm just part of the scenery. Just move out of the scenery. rocks are very slippery. It'll be even tougher coming back. Don't worry about that. Oh. It's awfully far down. It's even higher than Niagara Falls. Yes, it's very steep, too. Are you dizzy? No. You look a little pale. No, no, it's nothing. I... I was just wondering that this place is so deserted. Yes, we seem to be the only ones loafing on a weekday. Are you sure you're all right? Maybe I better... No, oh. take one step and I... Have you lost something? Maybe this? I paid my fee. Now deliver your service. How are you going to get me out of this? You don't think I would cheat you? Excuse me. Hello? Of course, I'm always in for Mr. Durand. Hello, Edward. Anytime you say. Of course you have to. The morning edition. Would you like to discuss it tonight in your office? No, it won't be too late. I have to attend the meeting myself. What? No, I haven't read today's paper. Did you hear that Miss Roberts, that young reporter, was accidentally killed at Montmorency Falls? It's in the last edition. No. How terrible. How tragic. Yes, of course. Yes, I'll, I'll see you tonight. I'm waiting for my reward. Oh, yes. You see, I must tell you, I was in your apartment the night Blanche died. It doesn't surprise you? Nothing surprises me coming from you. I should have known. You killed her! No, Michel. I can prove that I didn't. By the same means, you can prove that you didn't. Here, this makes you a free man again. I found it pinned to your pillow. I presume you recognize your wife's handwriting. Poor Blanche. 
You made me believe I was a killer so that I might kill for you. Second murder is always easier. Aren't you afraid it might become a habit? I'd better go. Oh, good evening, Mr. Frederick. Good evening, Johnny. Mr. Duroyan? Uh, no, he hasn't come in yet, but would you care to wait in his office? Thank you. Don't go. You won't find the diamond. John! John! Where's the girl? Girl? There was someone here. There's nobody here, sir. Nobody but you and me. Hello, Albert. Did I keep uh, you waiting? Uh, no. Is something wrong? You look upset. No, I'm all right. Come into my office. You need a drink. This business won't take up much of your time. This girl reporter of yours certainly gave me a shock. I just saw her. the morgue. I'll never forget her face. That's terrible. Any relatives left? No, none. Why, oh, Albert, what is it? What are you staring at? Are you sure you're all right? Shall I call a doctor? Uh, no, thank you. Will you drive me home? We can talk in the car. Oh, yes.
sorry, sir. This is a convent. Men are not admitted. Well, all I want is some information, please. Sorry. We don't give any information. I do for you, sir. Miss Roberts. Oh, come in. Come in. You're not the first to report her today. I can tell you all about her poor soul. She was such a nice girl. She kept everything so clean. You care to see the kitchen? All her belongings, no family. Mr. Durand said the Salvation Army would pick it up today. Are you going so soon? It was such a pleasure talking to you. What are you doing here? Killers are haunted. You see her too? Yes, all the time. We must get over it. There are no ghosts. Only hallucinations. It's in our minds. Yes, but people have been driven out of their minds. Maybe the noose is better than a straitjacket. Stop it! Come on. I drive you into town. No, we better not be seen together. For a ghost, I'm terribly hungry. How did you find him? I've never seen such a change in a man. Tell me, weren't you a little scared? No, not with you around. Thanks. At last. We had to trail him to the cemetery. You could have arrested him there, Inspector. He's ripe for a breakdown. Arrest him? No. I haven't a single watertight proof against him yet. The diary, the doodle, a lot of clues, but no evidence. But you are convinced he's a criminal, aren't you? Why else would I stick out my neck? But we've got to wait until he really commits himself, and then we'll get him. That's why I printed a false news item in my paper. For the first time in my life. Consciously, I mean. Maybe he'll commit himself tonight, at the concert. When he sees me there, he'll be... He won't see you. You're not going to the concert. Why not? I can't spare enough men to protect you in a crowd. Uh, we need a break, too, Miss. You don't want to endanger Michelle's concert. If I may say so, the safest place for you is your own apartment. Frederick has checked it already. And you have a good radio. Gentlemen, I will have to excuse myself. I have to get ready for the concert, you know. Yes, you'd better run along. I'll take Mary home. All right. Good luck, Michelle. Thanks, I'll need it. Goodbye, gentlemen. See you later. Goodbye, Michelle. Michelle, it's you. I, uh, I had a couple of minutes to spare before the concert and I thought that... You thought what? Well, I, I tried to think of an excuse to As see you. As if you needed an excuse to see me. Come in. Thank you. How do you feel? Oh, a little nervous. Well, of course you do. Come sit down. Thank you. You know, this room... Even when I saw it for the first time, it reminded me of... Of what? Have you ever felt when you saw a place that you know it? Although you're quite sure you've never seen it before. As if it were a dream. Mm hmm Tell me. Was there a person attached to your dream? Yes, I suppose there was. 
Have you time for sherry? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, yes, you do. It's early yet. Take my car and we'll have time. All right. Here's to your success. And to my favorite audience. Oh, you could say something nicer than that. What, for instance? Mm -hmm. For instance, to the person in your dream. I would like to say much more than that. Why don't you? Please don't ask me. You know why. Oh, Michelle. You never stop torturing yourself. Well, let's drink to the future, then. All right. Yes, to the future. Listen, may I call you from the concert hall and, and may I come back when it's over? Will you? Yes, right after the finale. This is for good luck. Wonderful. I always knew it. I shall arrange a tour for him. New York, Paris. Tonight I shall be able to sleep. Too much romanticism in his music. There is also a spiritual quality that will grow. Why did he have to meet you? Oh. I remember. This brain still works to perfection. The moment I saw your car behind the concert hall, I thought of... I'll remember. Later. Later. Listen to this. Again, the person must be in. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? An 
accident. Must look like an accident. You can't possibly want to kill me. You couldn't do anything crazier. Stop talking. If you kill me, that's a confession. A confession to the Marshawn murder. Idiots. I had the right to kill Marshawn. Who was he? And nobody with a lot of money to throw away with both hands. But in my hands, this money became a blessing. I bought beauty with it like this. And it will go on working for the best, as I decide. I, Albert Frederick. Now, you have my confession. But you are not going to talk. No, 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 I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to say a word. But my corpse would. Listen, you can't get away with it! No, 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 wait, 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 just a second. Please, please, think, think. Where's your alibi? They'll miss you at the concert. They'll look for you at home. Later. My brain will be much clearer. Later. Mary, Mary! Accident, accident. It must look like another accident. 